Are you thinking about moving to the Emerald Coast and Gulf Breeze is one of your options? Listen, people move here for a lot of different reasons. Maybe it's our all-star golfing, it's our schools, it's the amazing year-round weather we have, or maybe it's all of the fun on the water, whether it's going to the beach or getting out on a jet ski. Listen, it doesn't matter. People want to move to Gulf Breeze for a multitude of reasons. If you are thinking about moving to the Emerald Coast, especially Gulf Breeze, this is the video for you. Make sure you guys stick around to the end because we are going to go over nine things you absolutely need to know before moving to Gulf Breeze. Let's get into it. So the first thing you need to know about Gulf Breeze is that it is a coastal town. You've got easy access to the bay and to the sound and with a quick little boat drive you can get to the Gulf very easily. Um, there's a bunch of little neighborhoods that have canals throughout oh, the... Cool. Yeah, so you can just have drive up your boat to your house. It's pretty neat without having like, the big long dock. It's really yeah. nice. Um, but with that, obviously, comes flood zones. Mm -hmm. So all of, flood, all of Florida is a flood zone, but in Gulf Breeze, there are a lot of other flood zones that might require flood insurance by our lender. Yeah, so in the United States, just for anybody that doesn't know, if your state touches water or touches an ocean, then the entire state is technically in a flood zone. But that's not to be confused with you needing flood insurance. Right. So that's exactly what Kristen's talking about. Yep. So there are obviously some areas in Gulf Breeze that do not require flood insurance, but there's a lot that are. So I just like to like point it out to you guys in case you are thinking about moving to Gulf Breeze, just to kind of have that in the back of your mind if it's something that you're concerned about. Especially if you're on the south side in one of those neighborhoods that have canals or are a little bit closer to the water, it is something you might have to do. Now, don't fret about that. Sometimes our insurance uh, for flood is as low as $350 mm -hmm. per year. And then, of course, it scales up from there. Obviously, if you're a Gulf front home or a Bay front home, sound front home, you're going to have a lot higher um, insurance in that case. And of course, the main reason why so many people come here is our amazing beaches with that powder white sand and that emerald green water. That is just something that a lot of people flock to. That's why so many people come here to vacation and also move. But that's not the only thing that you really need to look out for in Gulf Breeze. There's well, at least eight other points we're going to mention in this video alone. And the second one of those is the residents. So if you want to go and move to a place that where all the residents are the exact same, everybody runs kind of in the same run of the mill style in their thought process and everything that they do, well, Gulf Breeze isn't for you. In fact, I don't think anywhere in our area is right for you because we have such a diverse population here and Gulf Breeze is no different. So the residents of Gulf Breeze, as we mentioned, are diverse in a lot of different ways. You're going to have retirees that have come back either from, they were stationed here before and they love it here, or people moving from the north that come down here because they're sick of the winter. You're going to have a military, so it's really close to NAS Pensacola, as well as Hurlburt and a couple other, you know, uh, military stations throughout the Panhandle. And we can't forget about people moving from other states with amazing climates. We're talking to you, California. We see that you guys are moving here in mass droves as well. So it's not just people trying to escape great weather. Sometimes it's trying to get into a better area political-wise. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> and another group of residents that you'll find are your professionals that are working in Pensacola. Gulf Breeze is a bedroom community of Pensacola because it's a nice little commute, which we'll get to in a little bit later in the video. But it's a great little town that if people don't want to live in a bigger city, which Pensacola is a little bit bigger of a city, they can come to the quieter Gulf Breeze. And of course, you've got the option to quickly get over to the beach when you live in Gulf Breeze. And you still have a really good option in Pensacola as well. But to me, it feels like you're like a direct line right to the beach. So if you're looking to do morning walks or anything like that, that is a good place to be. And there's also a very good amount of artistic things. So if you were somebody that likes the aesthetic or you like that kind of like artsy movement, Gulf Breeze is a great hub for this. We've got stuff all over the place, whether it's, you know, paintings or cool like resin stuff with like some of our beach, you know, the seashells and stuff inside of it. Just really kind of cool pieces of art or even our very own sandcastle man or Dan the sandcastle yeah. man who builds these just beautiful sandcastles. We'll have to show you guys a picture of that. Hopefully that's running in the background right now. We had him on our uh, one of our podcasts uh, very recently. Super cool dude. Very cool. But the point of this is for those of you that like that kind of artsy style, Gulf Breeze is a great place. Yeah, and don't forget about the photographers. They've got a lot of opportunities to not only photograph the nature and beach and all that good stuff, little animals and birds and all the fun stuff that's outdoors, but also 
our military. So the Blue Angels are right there in Pensacola and there are some amazing pictures that you can find in the fun art fairs and on Facebook that people sell that are ridiculously amazing. So don't forget about them. Yeah. Now, we would not be doing ourselves any justice if we didn't talk about housing a little bit because we are real estate agents first. But the housing here is another great reason to move to the area. Now, Gulf Breeze is a little bit more expensive than maybe, let's say, its neighbor to the east over in Navarre. But there are definitely areas that are cheaper than a chunk in Pensacola. So it just kind of depends on what you're looking for. But if you want to be outside of that city and you do want to be in your own kind of like encapsulated little yeah. area, Gulf Breeze is an outstanding area for you. So the median house price in Gulf Breeze as of December 2023, it's about $450. Um, so kind of average middle of the range there. Um, days on the market for listings is about 50 days on the market. So it's a little bit higher, mm -hmm. um, but it was also December. I did look into November and it's still kind of high. And it, that's just a weird area for us because, you know, people are thinking about Christmas and whatnot and not buying a house. So... Now, for that four hundred and fifty grand average, keep in mind that the spectrum is wide, so you can yeah. definitely find something cheaper. And in <laughs> Gulf Rays, you can definitely find something a lot more expensive because there's waterfront properties there too. The average property that you're gonna find around the four hundred and fifty thousand is gonna be like a four bed, two maybe three bathroom home, somewhere north of twenty five hundred square feet. Now, again, it's going to range, but that's just kind of giving you guys like a good blanket average of what Gulf Breeze looks like. So now's a great time to mention, you already kind of mentioned it before, is that we are real estate agents. So if you are looking to move to Gulf Breeze, give us a call. All of our information will be popping up here on the screen here in a second. We can help you not only find that perfect Gulf Breeze home, but we can help you with insurance quotes like we talked about the flood insurance and all and everything else that's in between. And of course, if you guys don't want to call, you can text, email, carrier, pigeon, however you want to get a hold of us. We also have a link down in the description box that you can literally click and get right onto my calendar. Okay, number four is a big one and one you need to know. If you guys have been following us on our channel, you have heard us say this all the time, but it is so very important. We have hurricanes here. What? That is a we real thing. Yeah, here in Florida, we have hurricanes. You might be a part of a hurricane when you move down here. Now, hurricanes are not everything. You know, it's not crazy. It's not like it's coming up out of nowhere and then all of a sudden we're freaking out. We have a week's notice. This isn't like an at earthquake. Least, yeah. yeah, at least a week. You know, if you're really watching it, you can watch them all the way out in the ocean coming on in. People right? do. <laughs> and they really do. And once they get into the box, that's when we generally have four or five, six days to kind of prep and either get out of town if it's big enough or just watch it to see what it's going to do. Andrew, so what's the box? The, so the box, yeah, that's a very good point. So the box is right when it comes in from what ocean is it? The Pacific Ocean. <laughs> the Atlantic. I'm so bad at this. So the box is basically right when the Atlantic Ocean crosses over into Florida, and it kind of creates like a little box here at the tip of Florida, right down here in the Mexico region. Kind of looks like a, a little box, yeah. and that's basically it. And from that point, you'll still have a pretty good amount of time because a lot of times the hurricanes will sit there and just get stronger for a little bit. Don't let that freak you out. If the hurricane is strong enough, just get out of town. It's not that big of a yeah. deal. Um, you have plenty of heads up as long as you do it early enough. If you try to wait until the absolute last second, yeah. yes, you might hit traffic then. Uh, but for the most part, the hurricanes really aren't all that big of a no. deal. But it's something you need to at least consider before moving. And if it makes you feel any better, I've lived in the north where there's tornadoes. I've lived in California where there's earthquakes. And I, will, I won't take a hurricane any day, <laughs> but... Given the lesser of the evils, I would I, I would take a hurricane because, like he said, because it just you have more time to prepare to you know safety up your house and then to get out of town. So. Yeah, or just buy a whole bunch of alcohol so you can ride out the wave. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I did. But with hurricanes, so Gulf Breeze has been hit before um, by hurricanes. It's been a while, knock on wood. Um, but in 2007 and 2009, it had the after, well, the, the side effects, I guess you could say, of Dennis and Ivan. So there was a lot of destruction, some some homes being just damp, like just torn up, roof damage, all that stuff. When I moved down here in 2006, going driving along um, Highway 98, there were still boats on the north side of 98. There were still trees that were bent. I mean, it was tarp how uh, roofs were still tarped up so um it takes a minute for it to get you know back to normal if you will um then in 2020 
um, we had Sally. So Sally was still a pretty big hurricane. I want to say it was category three. Um, but for the after effects of that, the damage from that was mainly just wind and rain. We had, we had some flooding things happen. Um, but that one wasn't as crazy as some of the other ones. We did have Michael come through in, what was that, 2019? 2019 yeah, or 20, something yeah. like that. Um, but that hit in, Pens uh, in Panama City. And luckily, for us at least, not for our neighbors to the east, but for us, there really wasn't. It was just thunderstorms that came through. Yeah, felt no different than a normal thunderstorm. Yeah. And, you know, that's the thing with the hurricanes is Florida is a really big place. A lot of people, you know, even my family included, are always like, well, you guys are always getting hit with hurricanes. It's like, yeah, Florida is huge. Yeah. Of course, Florida is constantly getting hit. But the chance of our little area getting hit is fairly low. When you're looking at these mm -hmm. timelines that we're talking about, we're talking like 2018 was the last like kind of close one. Yeah. And then before that, what, 2011, 2007, something yeah. like that. Like It is far and few between. So don't go thinking that the hurricanes are just constantly slamming us all the time. It's realistically every 12 to 15 years that we might get a direct yeah. hit. So the fifth thing you need to know before coming to Gulf Breeze is that there are great reputable schools in the city. So you've got one main high school, Gulf Breeze High School, they're home of the Dolphins, um, but there are two kind of pathways, if you will, depending on which um, side of the, the city that you live in, uh, for elementary schools and for middle schools. So on the uh, west side of Gulf Breeze, you've got Gulf Breeze Elementary and Gulf Breeze Middle School. And then on the east side, you've got Oriole Beach Elementary and Woodlawn Beach Middle School. Um, sometimes on the very far eastern side of Gulf Breeze, they might go to West Navarre, but for the most part, they're kind of staying in those schools right there. They all got pretty good scores on greatschools.org. Um, the Woodlawn Beach Middle School got a 7 out of 10, and everybody else got an 8 or a 9 out of 10. So that's pretty good. Yeah, and greatschools.org, if you're not familiar with it, they take into consideration um, testing, um, the different, number of students per teacher, yep, I think, is one of all the metrics. Stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the high school, it, it considers um, college placement. So getting an 8 or a 9 mm -hmm. for a high school is pretty darn good. Yeah, no kidding. There's also some private school options for your high schoolers and below. And then there's actually a campus for Pensacola State College. Let's move on over into number six on our list, which is the traffic and commute. Anytime you're going to move to a new city, you've got to take into consideration the traffic. And here in our area, we're always complaining about the traffic and the commute times. But when we talk to people from like real cities, they're <laughs> like, this is amazing. Everything is so quick to get to. Gulf Breeze is no different. Everything within Gulf Breeze is going to be extremely quick to get to. Now, you might have a little bit of commute if you're heading a little bit more east over into Hurlburt Field or if you're heading west into Pensacola, Maine. Let's talk about those commute times. So if you live in Gulf Breeze proper, then, which is the far east side of the city, going into Hurlburt, you're looking at about an hour drive. Um, and it's just because of the sheer distance that you're driving. If you're going from Gulf Breeze proper into Pensacola, because you're one of those working professionals trying to get out of the big city, then you're only really about a 15, 20 minute drive into town. And that's what's traffic. Um, it's really just not too bad. If you're in the eastern side of um, Gulf Breeze driving to Hurlburt, you're probably about a 30, 45 minutes. And if you're on that same eastern side going into Pensacola, you're about a 45 minute drive. So it does kind of matter because you are kind of, even though Gulf Breeze is that bedroom community, it's kind of the opposite way to go into town mm -hmm. for the more, even for your morning shift and coming home. Um, but it is, it's the traffic is not bad. I've lived in Chicago. I've lived in Sacramento. I've lived in Oakland and this traffic is nothing. So, <laughs> so it's kind of funny. Yeah. Sometimes our 20 minute commute ends up being 25 minutes and it just angers some of us Floridians because <laughs> we're just not those kind of folks. You know what I mean? Yeah. One major thing to keep in mind about Gulf Breeze as well is that there are three bridges that go in and out of the Gulf Breeze area. Yep. So we've got Garson Point Bridge, which that takes you to Garson Point, <laughs> and wow. Pace and Milton. So that's the one going north. It's 275 each way, um, but you can't get a sun pass. Actually, I don't even think they take cash or, or cards anymore. So it's either a sun pass or they'll toll your, your driver, your license plate after the factory. It's just like the weirdest out. thing. If you drive through without a sun pass... They'll send you a bill in the mail with a picture of your car. It's actually kind of interesting. So make sure when you drive through and you don't have a sun pass, you're waving because it shows up. <laughs> I've done it before. It's awesome. Um, so the next bridge is the Pensacola Bay Bridge, also called the Three Mile Bridge. A lot of locals still call it that. Yeah. Um, so that's the one that's going to lead you right into Pensacola. It is not a toll bridge. Um, and now, since it just got rebuilt, um, it's got some fun lights to it that 
us locals either love them or they hate them. I think they're ridiculous, but they remind me of like the the lights that you can like teenagers have around their, their ceiling. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not the greatest, but they do have some pretty cool like overhangs for people that are yep. walking the bridge, which I think is crazy. That's a three mile. I mean, it's called a three mile bridge yep. for a reason, and people are walking it. Although I don't, they see have that a run anything. coming up too. Oh, really? You can run. It's the three mile run something or other, but oh, you run, didn't you run even know that. over and back. Yeah, <laughs> cool. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. And then the third bridge is the one that goes to Pensacola Beach. Um, that one's called the Bob Sykes Bridge. Um, and that one is a dollar. Um, and it's only a dollar going south. So you only get tolled once. But it's the same thing. You need that sun pass or they're going to toll your, your license plate. So make sure you wait. And that's where all the restaurants are going to be. The beach, mm-hmm. of course. And just a ton of little stuff crammed into one little area. It's yeah. pretty cool. So the seventh thing that you need to know before moving to Gulf Breeze is that it's kind of cut up into like little sections. They all have fun little names. But their address is all Gulf Breeze, Florida. So kind of keep that in mind. But if someone talks to you about Tiger Point or Midway or Gulf Breeze proper, that's what they're talking about. We're all in Gulf Breeze, but they're little sections. Okay. So going from the east all the way to the west, you've got Midway, which is it's, named that it's because... Midway between Navarre and Gulf Breeze. There you go. <laughs> that's so crazy. <laughs> so creative. The next one is Tiger Point, which is... After the golf course. Yes. Also very creative. Then we have Oriole Beach, which is... After Oriole Beach. Actually, no, it is not. Ah. It is after the Oriole bird, which I can't say Oriole, apparently, but it's after the Oriole bird, which, think the Baltimore Orioles, it's the same little bird. In fact, some of the ones from the north actually fly down south to Gulf Breeze. So it's kind of cool. I actually didn't know that. That's really good. I'm learning this real time with you guys. (laughs) Um, But they're cute little black and orange birds. They're super cute. So if you're... When you decide to move down here and you're out, you know, doing your bird watching, you might see a little Oriole in the in the winter. It's awesome. And then finally, on the very west side of town is Gulf Breeze proper. Which do you know why that one is? Because it's uh, Gulf Breeze. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Okay, so um, when Gulf Breeze started becoming a city, um, that little area of Gulf Breeze proper is actually the only part that's that's incorporated. Everything else is not incorporated, and the mm-hmm. residents that lived there wanted to kind of set themselves apart. But keep in mind, it's all Gulf. Like, their address is still Gulf Breeze. So, yeah. I learned two things in this video. Yeah. I actually learned that one, too. I just thought it was because it was bougie, but... Yeah, that's what I thought, too. So, if you guys learned something new, go ahead and put that in the comment section down below, because I'm actually pretty (laughs) surprised right now. Like, I didn't even look over everything before we started, so that's pretty cool. Little facts. I like it. (laughs) So, number eight on our list is very similar to number one on our list, which was that it is a coastal town. So, number eight is all of the outdoor recreation that is associated with that. That is more than just the beach. So we're talking hiking, even though we are a fairly flat state, we do have great hiking, trail riding, you've got boating, you've got fishing, you've got stand-up paddleboard, that is getting really popular right now, along with pickleball, I don't really know if that's really, it's still outdoor, I guess. But there are just a ton of things to do outdoors, and although this isn't really outdoor recreation per se, I have to I have to uh, say that the zoo that they have in Gulf Breeze is yep. also pretty freaking awesome. And I'm not normally like a zoo person, but I'd go. <laughs> well, one of my favorite parks is actually Shoreline Park. So that is actually across the street from the Gulf Breeze Rec Center, mm-hmm. which has a ton of tennis. Like they're, I don't know if it's like a tennis club, but they've got a lot of tennis courts and they're they're big into little tennis matches, I guess that's what they're called. Um, but so another outdoor activity. Um, but Shoreline Park actually has a ton of um, little gazebos that you can have picnic under. There's boardwalks that you can fish off of. And then there's also a boat ramp there. That's awesome. I love that. Tennis. Get it? <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> If you like to fish, another little park that is at the foot of the Three Mile Bridge on the Gulf Breeze side is called Wayside Park. Um, and that's just a great spot for fishing. Um, you'll see people just kind of hanging out there. And at first, when I came here, I was like, what is, what's, what, what are they doing? And they're, they're just fishing, just having the best time, just fishing. It's so cool because you always see people either on the pier or just anywhere that they're fishing. And some of these guys just like sit out there for 10 hours straight, sitting on their cooler, just enjoying their day. Yeah. And although that's not my kind of thing, I'm not really a fisherman per se, it does look fairly relaxing. It does look relaxing. And of course, you have everything that is there at Pensacola Beach and even Navarre Beach. So you've got kind of a, a nice little split, depending on which side of Gulf Breeze yeah. you're on, which one that you might want to visit. You've got the advantage of you know, having kind of the nice calm beach at Navarre, or if you're looking for more things to do, the entire boardwalk in Pensacola Beach is also a really good place. As I mentioned before, tons of restaurants, 
tons of uh, condos, of course, and just a lot of fun things to do. Mm -hmm. Not to mention the fort that's back there. So we've got yeah. some history there if you're into that. And of course, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the Gulf Breeze yes. or Tiger Point Golf Course. So outstanding golf course out there if you are into golf definitely check it out yeah and they've got actually a lot of fun activities for kids too my son actually took lessons there so oh, they've got cool. all different kinds of stuff that, that they offer now before we get into number nine yeah. on our list if you haven't already and you found this valuable which if you made it this far you you probably did so. please consider hitting that subscribe button down there and then digging that little bell so that every single time i do a new video you will get notified so let's go to number nine shopping and dining Yes, I'll take this one. All right. <laughs> so the next thing you need to know is the shopping and dining. All right, so one thing that I get asked a lot is where's the shopping? Um, it's a small town, so is there big box stores, that kind of stuff? And there are a few. So there's a Lowe's. There is um, a Bell's or Beals. I always call it Beals, and I think I'm wrong, but it's a clothing store, like a little home goods and clothing store. Um, there is um, Ace Hardware store as well, as well as a movie theater. Um, you've got a bunch of different grocery options, every single drugstore that you can think of, plus really cute little boutique stores, as well as some thrift stores. Um, there's a Chick-fil-A and Starbucks. There's a bunch of really nice sit-down places for Thai food, for barbecue, um, seafood, um, and as, as well as the rest of the fast food type joints. Um, but you really can, I mean, they've got a lot of stuff going on. Dunkin' Donuts, um, there's a Scooter's Coffee now, which a lot of people like. And there's a lot of different options there that, even though it is a smaller town, they've got a lot. And with, for what you can't find, you're a quick drive over to Pensacola. And they've got a mall there, an actual mall. Like a real one. Like a real like one. A, that's yeah. still functioning. Like an old school mall. Yeah. <laughs> it's a nice one. It's not half empty. Yeah, we're sitting here shooting this in Fort Walton Beach, which is where our office is. But our mall here is kind of shut down a little bit. It's I pretty mean, much it's, shut down. I think I there's mean, two stores. Yeah, there's like some stores in there, but like the big box stuff is shut down. And that's one cool thing about Pensacola is for those that still like that nostalgia or just shopping at a mall, mm -hmm. that's where they go. And uh, it's, it's yeah. a really good mall. So those are the nine things that we felt you guys absolutely need to know before moving here, just to give you guys a little bit more insight onto what Gulf Breeze is all about. As always, if you guys have any questions, you can always reach out to us. Even if you're not planning on moving here, you just, or maybe you're not sure, you just kind of want to chat about it. All of our information, again, will pop up on the screen. And as I mentioned before, we'll have a link down in the uh, description as well. So you can just click a button and get right on our calendar. So hopefully that was helpful to you guys. If it was, put a comment down below on what your favorite thing that you heard today was. And I guess we'll see you in the next one. See you later. Nice. High five. That was a good one. <laughs>